When you think of terrifying films, you do think of one particular genre. I'm not talking, of course, about Dracula and Hammer House, but there is one man that literally did so much to scare the public going to the movies, and he thoroughly enjoyed it. And it's hard to believe that he would have been 125. Oh yes, we're talking about the brilliant Alfred Hitchcock. Now, for all those that are thinking, Neil, surely you didn't meet Alfred Hitchcock. Sadly, no. But I did meet quite a few people that were lucky enough to work with him. And I thought I'd share a couple of stories with you, basically just to celebrate his life. Because after all, even now when you watch those movies like Rear Window and Psycho, you're still frightened, aren't you? You are, right? I mean, who dare now go in a shower, you know? <laughs> I mean, he literally killed that look, didn't he? You know, it was fatty. And it's really strange when you think, because at that time, even though now we know it and we see things and stuff like that, in that particular era, it was literally terrifying at the cinema because, of course, you had other greats terrifying as well, like the wonderful director William Castle. Remember him? But you see, Alfred Hitchcock was truly one of his own. You know, he branched out into so many areas and obviously had gone to Hollywood when he felt he wasn't getting the recognition and indeed all the, well, shall we say, the superlatives that he felt he was owed over here in Great Britain, even though he'd had quite a bit of success. Now, I was lucky enough to meet one of his wonderful stars, the brilliant Richard Todd. That's right, of the Dam Busters fame. And I think I may have mentioned this before, it was a very strange meeting because we were both appearing at the Theatre Royal in Hanley and he was in a play in the afternoon and I was doing Variety, or the wonderful world of Variety, in the evening with Variety Express. And what was fascinating was he'd fallen asleep in the, in the chair on the set. You know, we were all there rehearsing a little bit early and I thought, wow, this is Richard Todd. Lovely, lovely man, so down to earth, so much good fun. And naturally we ended up chatting. He appeared, of course, in the brilliant Hitchcock movie, Stage Fright. And what was interesting, as he pointed out with this, was the fact that, you know, he, there was a lot of big names in there and only recently become a big star. You know, he wasn't a major star at that point. Jane Wyman, Marlena Dietrich. He said that actually, and this is the interesting bit that I wanted to share with you, Marlena Dietrich really didn't need Alfred Hitchcock. He said she knew so much about the wonderful world of movie making, all thanks to her tutelage under Joseph von Steinberg. He was a sort of mentor at the very beginning. And he said that Marlene knew how to light herself, where she should stand, and for maximum effect. He said, of course, the lighting always favoured Marlene. <laughs> also pointed out though, that Marlene and Hitch had something of a bit of a battle with their London hotel, because they both decided to stay at the very prestigious Coburg Hotel in Queensway, London. But she'd snaffled the dome at the top. Yes, you see, always the diva. Now, another story that was told to me by the brilliant Tony Curtis was none other than the fact that he too was desperate to work with Alfred Hitchcock. And that had been muted around for quite a few years, even pushed forward by Tony's pal, Frank Sinatra. But of course, everything changed after Psycho. And that's because that became a phenomenal worldwide hit, as I say, all thanks to the shower scene and the brilliant acting of Jeanette Lee. Now, of course, Jeanette Lee was married to Tony Curtis and their marriage sadly fell apart. Tony was very open about the reasons why. He said they were both very young. They both were literally gliding the path of fame and more importantly, both had huge egos. Now, after the success of Some Like It Hot, opposite, you know, Marilyn Monroe and Jack Lemmon, apparently Hitchcock was quite keen to work, but he didn't map out. Tony had a deal with Universal and they couldn't quite get it together. However, years down the line, according to Tony, Alfred Hitchcock decided not to work with him, not because he didn't think he was a good actor or debonair or good looking enough, anything like that. He just didn't want the conflict in the media. And he felt that everybody then would regurgitate the negative stories about Jeanette and of course Tony and the breakdown of their marriage. They had been sort of tabloid fodder for quite a long time. And he felt that this would distract away from the movie. According to Tony, the original idea was for him to be in Marnie. That's right, a movie role that was taken by then, of course, James Bond himself, Sir Sean Connery. It's funny how the movie business moves around, isn't it? But Alfred Hitchcock was always about self-preservation and he knew about appearing in his movies, about making cameos and leaving a legacy. Now, without a doubt, Alfred Hitchcock definitely left a legacy. And I bet you're thinking about the shower scene now, aren't you? As ever, thank you for allowing me to share these Hollywood bomb mots with you. And I'm so glad that you enjoyed them. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.